hop comme ça on nous laisse, ça nous laissera le temps ça me laissera le temps pour manger et tout et puis on se retrouvera ce soir pour du phasmophobia au MG ça fait longtemps ça va être très cool tac ouais du coup j'ai hâte de voir ce qu'ils vont nous montrer ils nous ont déjà utilisé quelques trucs sur twitter donc euh... pour l'instant ça donne envie Surtout le DLC, euh, ils ont montré une zone qui est, qui est une sorte de bibliothèque euh, grandeur nature, mais du coup, je pense pas que ce soit le seul biome. Si c'est comme l'île de l'éternité, il devrait y en avoir trois. Donc j'ai hâte de, de voir ce que ce sera. Puis j'aimerais bien qu'ils nous utilisent des biomes, mais pour le, le, la vallée de base. On commence à manquer de place. Enfin, je dis ça, mais il y a des endroits que j'ai même pas vraiment décoré, mais. Hop. Genre le hauteur glacé c'est un, un peu la crise. Et puis est-ce qu'on va avoir la, la date de la prochaine mage Si qui devrait arriver. Ouais fin novembre début décembre. Peut-être plus début décembre quand même. Je, je sais plus il reste combien de temps pour la, la voie des étoiles. Et je pense qu'ils vont commencer à un peu nous teaser tout. Et aussi qu'on aura des nouvelles sur l'île d'Ukraine qui est toujours pas ouverte depuis deux ans putain. Ça nous tease mais il se passe pas grand chose hein, de ce côté là. Du coup j'ai hâte que ça arrive. Voilà voilà. Attendez je vais rebaisser en voit c'est un peu fort. On, on augmentera quand il y aura les voix. Hop là. OMG. Que 7 minutes. Incroyable. La question c'est aussi, est-ce que pour, euh, lors de la prochaine mage, il y aura aussi directement le DLC ou ce sera dans deux mages <rire> Que si on a un DLC tous les ans pour euh, décembre, il bah, bah, y en a avoir du contenu à faire en fin d'année. Ce qui m'arrange parce que en soi, j'ai pas, enfin il reste pas non plus énormément de jeux qui me restent à faire pour la fin d'année. Donc à moins les petits trucs que j'ai prévu sur Minecraft. Et bon si ça dure deux semaines et c'est rapide bon. Il me faut du content. Mais si on a un DLC et une mage. Là on va avoir du content. Que j'ai de l'éternité quand c'est sorti. On a fait pas mal de stream dessus je crois quand même. Je crois qu'on a bien fait deux semaines. Deux semaines deux fois par jour. Donc voilà les DLC toujours. Pas mal de contenus qui sont cool. J'avoue ce qui me a peu plus c'est de, de connaître les, les persos qui vont arriver. Les persos c'est vraiment meilleur. On sait que dans DSA il y aura Maléfique et, euh, et Hades. Dans le jeu de base il y a Sally qui devrait arriver à la prochaine mage. Est-ce que Sally va arriver seule aussi s'il n'y a pas le, le DSA Que ça fait longtemps qu'on n'a pas eu un, un DSA avec une mage. Enfin avec un personnage pardon. Une mage avec un personnage ça fait très longtemps. Puis hâte de savoir aussi quel sera le prochain royaume qu'on va découvrir. <rire> en espérant que ce soit un vrai nouveau royaume et euh, pas un royaume où on retourne. Mais c'est sympa les nouveaux persos mais moi j'aime bien les nouvelles licences. Et même juste découvrir de nouvelles zones. Je trouve ça quand même un peu mieux. Voilà voilà. Surtout qu'en plus dans le royaume normalement il est censé y avoir Rafiki qui va arriver à un moment. Donc, apparemment il est dans les fichiers du jeu. Donc est-ce que ça sera comme Timon et Pumba ou est-ce qu'il sera en DSC ou je sais pas. Je sais pas, je sais pas. Mais surtout qu'en plus les DSC euh... c'est pas forcément que des persos secondaires. Et on a vu réponse, euh... c'est vraiment des, des persos principales qu'il peut y avoir. Donc, euh, donc à voir. Genre par exemple il y a aussi Ralph, euh, des mondes de Ralph qui, euh, qui était dans les trailers du jeu, qui est toujours pas là. Alors est-ce qu'il va arriver aussi en DLC ou est-ce qu'il sera en, dans un royaume ou en mode random comme Tiana Ouais je sais pas, je sais pas. Beaucoup de questions à se poser encore. Plus, plus. 
Et moi j'attends une zone, où, une belle zone où je pourrais faire un, mon parc d'attractions en entier. En vrai, même si c'est genre dans un DLC où je peux vraiment mettre, euh, enfin où ça peut rendre bien de faire un parc d'attractions, je ferais ça là-bas, mais. J'aimerais bien une zone, une grande zone dans la vallée principale où faire ça. Mais en même temps, il y a tellement de trucs, il y a tellement d'attractions que même s'il rajoute une nouvelle zone, je suis même pas sûr qu'il y ait la place pour tout faire. Du coup, j'avoue que je préférerais quand même un, un parc d'attractions dans, dans, dans un DLC. Que si c'est des zones aussi grandes que les deux éternités, en vrai, on a largement la place. Donc, à voir. À voir, à voir. OMG. Plus que 3 minutes 15. Ah ouais, du coup, Showcase euh, qui sort plus tôt. Et la plupart des gens avaient call euh, genre le 1er novembre. C'était la date du Showcase de l'année dernière. Et finalement, il est là un peu plus tôt. Ce qui est pas plus mal, hein, si ça avance les mages et tout. Moi, ouais, je suis chaud. Et je pense que dès que le showcase sera terminé, on coupera et puis. Euh, histoire de pas être trop en retard pour ce soir. OMG, plus que 2 minutes 30. Oh la masterclass! Oh la masterclass en fait! Après en soi si la prochaine match n'est pas big c'est bien ça me permettrait de terminer les 4 que j'ai. Il va rester 4 de Timon et Pumba et... Et ouais je pensais avoir fini avec Ursula, je pensais qu'on avait terminé la dernière fois mais non en fait j'ai re-récupéré des quêtes. Du coup c'est toujours pas fini. C'est plus long que je pensais. Ah et du coup demain il y a Shop Premium et tout. Oh là là, faut je me connecte. Je sais pas s'il y aura des trucs intéressants. Après je suis pauvre, donc en vrai s'il n'y a rien ça m'arrange. Si je peux garder des pierres de lune pour la prochaine mage. Ce serait plutôt cool. Après maintenant que vu qu'il y a les recommandations, bon. Je suis un peu moins, euh, je suis un peu moins pressé d'acheter des trucs. Et apparemment il y aura aussi un nouvel outil. Comme on a vu s'habiller dans le. Dans le. Bah, dans l'ancien DLC. Donc je sais pas du tout ce que ça va être. Ah ouais, des, des outils, mais il n'en existe pas non plus des mille. OMG. Oh. Ok. Ou alors, vu que c'est vu que le biome de base c'est une bibliothèque, peut-être que ce sera un livre. Peut-être qu'on va faire des trucs avec des livres. En, en vrai, vu que ça part de livres et tout, il peut peut-être y avoir genre Winnie Lourson et tout. Vu qu'ils sont vraiment basés sur, euh, sur un livre. Ah, ça, peut, ça serait très sympa. On verra. Plus que 30 secondes. Ah oh ouais. Voilà, hype. Attends, du coup, je peux en profiter, on va remonter un peu le son. Pas mettre à fond non plus. On baissera si jamais les voix sont trop fortes. Mais on regarde. Et on profite. Oh, C'est parti. Découvrons les prochaines mages. Oh ouais. Voilà oh, Masterclass. C'est maintenant Peggy 3. Putain, je peux pas regarder. Okay. Oh Ok, ça commence déjà avec Sally et tout. Oh Ouais, c'est direct. Oh waouh! Ah, c'est trop stylé ça! Oh, des petits dragons, ils sont trop mignons! Oh, ils sont trop mignons! Hey Valley Villagers, welcome to the Disney Dreamland. Ah, je peux monter un peu en vrai. Ouais. Ah, je me, je me fous. Ah non. Non. So excited to give you behind the magic look at what's coming next for the game. So, what do we have in store for you today? We're thrilled to introduce some of the amazing folks on the team, reflect on this incredible past year of free updates. And the Disney Dreamlight oh. Valley, a Rift in Time expansion pass. We'll also look ahead at some of the exciting developments on the horizon. 
And make sure to tune in for the full stream as well. It'll be bursting with surprise reveals and exclusive teasers that you won't want to miss. Des bleus mon incroyable. We're starting this celebration by reflecting on one of the best parts of Disney Dreamlight Valley, you. Our community. Oh, c'est moi. And thank you for joining us today and living magically with us and alongside some of your favorite Disney and Pixar characters. Let's dive into how you've shaped this journey with the inclusion of community-driven features, some arriving a lot sooner than you might expect. Okay. At this point, there isn't a corner of my own valley that isn't inspired in part by our fans' designs. But what I love is seeing their reactions to each update, exploring and relating to the stories that each new character brings. And just like last year, we've brought along some clips that show off our past year of updates, just as we see it through the community's eyes. Okay, ça monte ce truc de la commu. Hi, it's Jack Skellington. Willkommen. Okay, that's good club. Wunderbar. Well, you see, I'm the president of the Oogie Boogie Fan Club. What? <laughs> Ah oui, c'est vrai, ça avait demandé euh, un truc sur Twitter. Montrer. I love it. <rire> Look how cute she looks. Look at her. Wow. Y'a pas de français. C'est comme sur Minecraft, il y a pas de français. That I have to break them with hands. We're gonna make. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. We're like changing it from the past to the present. Oh my god. Hi, Oswald. Oh, Oswald! Look at us flying! Oh, hey, that's me on mid. Before we get any further, I think we have a code 2319. A code, a code. 23. Oh. That's the first redemption code we have to share with everyone watching the stream. Add some celebratory style to your avatar by redeeming the code on screen for a pair of Dreamlight oh, High High socks and Dreamlight Crew socks to wear in game. Use these steps to redeem the code and be sure to tune into the full stream for additional code reveals. Since this time last year, we've introduced two new realms. 13 new characters and dozens of exciting furniture and wardrobe items across the six de Royaumes, and the Disney Dreamlight Valley, a Rift in Time expansion pass. Ah ouais, As always, if you have a suggestion or feedback for the game, plus. don't hesitate to let us know on one of our social media accounts or by joining our official Discord server. Up next, we've got another community manager, Courtney, and our game manager, Guillaume, to give you all the deets on our upcoming free update and maybe some of those aforementioned quality of life improvements that you can expect coming to your valleys very soon. Ok, prochaine match du coup, je pense. Oh, mais le château est différent. Merci d'avoir invité aujourd'hui pour prendre un profond dans le prochain update free content qui va venir à la Valley. Hello! Merci pour nous avoir invités. Donc, l'année dernière, à ce moment-là, nous avons révélé Jack Skellington et le Pumpkin King Returns update. Comme vous l'avez probablement deviné de notre dernière roadmap, Sally, de Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, va nous rejoindre, en bringant son signature Patrick style à la Valley comme partie de ce update si délicieux. After hunting for dolls and experimenting on night shards with Jack, what can we expect from Sally's adventures in the valley? Well, having lost her way outside the valley, players will team up with Jack to make sense of Sally's creepy crawly messengers as they craft a plan to reunite with her. Then as Sally gets comfortable in the valley, you'll help her set up a macabre date night, embrace the art mm. of quilting, and puzzle out her latest oh. premonition, among other things. So as far as Sally's friendship rewards go, what can players expect? Well, inspired by our sense of style, you can expect tons of patterns across oh, clothing and, and, and furniture. <laughs> From stripped socks to a bed featuring Sally's iconic patchwork aesthetic, this reward oh, just screams hey. Sally. Now, it wouldn't be a Disney Dreamlight Valley update without a new star path. What can we expect from the theme this time oh, around? Thème. Well, this winter we'll be embracing the ethereal sides of the season. You'll get to step into your own personal oh, wow. fairy tale with ice and oh, furniture, beau. and bring a sense of whimsy to your dream stop submissions with a wand that produces snowflakes. Well, there's never been a better time to join the Valley, especially now, as I know the team's been cooking up something particularly special with this update. Isn't that right, Guillaume? That's right. 
As part of the so delightful update, we're introducing a feature called Floating Islands. Oh. These act as additional spaces oh, okay. wow. to the valley where players can decorate and let their creativity run free. Oh, oh so trop bien. Think of these as extensions of the current biomes? Exactly. Each biome in the valley will have a floating island counterpart, retaining the same theme and ambience, but it will start as a clean slate. We plan to roll this out over time and we'll kick things off with four floating islands in the so delightful oh, like biome oh, in the valley and purchasable with Dreamlight. And even better, each floating oh, island has a exact limit independent from those in the valley, making them perfect for exploring your creativity and seeing how far you can go with your decorating skills. We've also seen how oh, our bien. community is to connect, so it was equally important to us to ensure that this creativity could be shared. So yes, you will be able to travel to floating islands during valley visits. How big are these spaces? From a scale perspective, our intention is for each of these floating islands to feel comparable in size to their valley counterparts, once you've taken out immovable features. Ultimately, the goal is to offer ample space to create without them feeling overwhelming. We will have more to share about the exact size of the floating islands a little closer to launch. And any furniture, decorations, or houses you've collected, as well as villagers you've befriended, will be totally accessible on these islands. And you won't have to worry about tidying oh, up. Oh, trop Instead, bien. the focus will be on empowering you with the creativity-focused options you've come to love. We have one more piece of big news to share regarding a feature update. Oh, in addition to floating islands? Yes. We're improving upon how players can decorate in a huge way. Currently, Item rotation is locked to the four cardinal directions. We've been impressed oh, with our coming oh creative drive, and it has inspired us to add even greater control when placing items by increasing to 16 points of rotation. And this feature won't just quoi, mais trop bien. You'll be able to more freely rotate buildings, landscaping items, resources like flowers, and even oh, drop ouais. items like prepared dishes. Our plan is to continue building upon this feature over time, including extending the support to fences and paths. When will players be able to get their hands on these features in the rest of the update? We are excited to share that the So Delightful update will be released free for all players on December 4th, 2024. 4 December. Release date. I feel like there was one more thing you wanted to unveil. On a date. Looking ahead to next year, we're excited to share the free content roadmap for the first half of 2025. Oh, Alice, Aladdin. The first three updates of early next et en year. Wow, look. Oh, c'est the loin. There are two I know have been among the top in community requests, and it's safe to say I'm right there with them. And this is just a first look at what we have in store. With such a rich history of Disney and Pixar stories to draw from, there are so many exciting characters yet to come. I've been tidying myself over by hosting tea parties in the valley, so I can't wait until we can share what the team's got in the cards for that spring update. How about you, Ryan? I'm excited to see what Secret Skull Rock might hold. After all, I know this has been a hot topic among the community, but most importantly, I can't wait to see what all of our players are most excited about. But with that, I really appreciate you both taking the time to chat today. Changing gears from free content updates, I think it's about time we visited a new land of mythical proportions. This is Oh wow. Welcome to the storybook Vale. Lately, life here hasn't been so happily ever after. Oh! The Merida! It wasn't always like this. Oh, trop bien. Once upon a time, the storybook Vale was a land made up of legendary stories. Oh, Finn! Fairy okay. tales sprang to life until one day powerful villains stole it away and took it to their image. But their wicked nature didn't keep them friendly for long. Their hunger for power tore the Vale apart. But all is not lost forever. Explore this magical world floating in the sky. Ah ouais, les maisons. Discover an enchanted artifact. Okay. To treasure tales that have taken on a life of their own. Ah wow. Unravel mythic riddles and oh, fantasia. hidden secrets. Rekindle old friendships. We discover long lost fables. Oh, side master class. Help old friends come back together again. Oh, it's Aurora. Disney Dreamlight okay. Valley. The Storybook Veil vale, Part 1 launches November 20. Le 20 November! Oh, les mages arrivent pas en même temps! C'est si bientôt! Oh, c'est bientôt! Oh, Disney Dreamlight Valley, the Storybook Veil vale ouais. invites players to make use of their Stardust port once again to be whisked away to the Veil. Vale. Our second expansion pass gives players a whole new adventure full of new friends, 
quests, biomes, and even more surprises. Oh, I must talk Joining us now to share more on the narrative and game design of Disney Dreamlight Valley, the storybook fail, are some familiar faces from our last showcase, Josh and Calixta. Welcome. Hello. Happy to be here. I'm sure everyone is buzzing with questions after seeing that amazing trailer. To kick things off, could you share some more insights into the direction behind creating another expansion pass? Of course. So expansion passes let us recapture the feeling that we gave players the first time they stepped into the valley, telling a whole new story with new villagers to meet, mysteries to unravel, and biomes to make all your own. They're a great way for us to deliver just a huge amount of content to players. And many of our players have interacted with the first expansion pass, Disney Dreamlight Valley or Rift in Time, which was explored in three acts. Should they be looking forward to a similar rollout with this new one? So for this expansion, we chose to do two parts with I more do. content in each. We saw player feedback okay. around the time to reach the conclusion of the story and get you far. And with this new format, you'll get okay. just as much content without as long of a wait. But just like with our first expansion, purchasing the Disney Dreamlight Valley, the Storybook Veil vale expansion pass will get you both parts as they become available. More content, fewer cliffhangers, count me in. Now it's time to spill the beans. What is the exciting story this time? So the Storybook Veil vale is the place in your heart where all your most treasured stories live. Once it hung in the sky above Dreamlight Valley, but during the forgetting, two Disney villains stole the veil away. For a time, Maleficent from Disney's Sleeping Beauty and Hades from Disney's Hercules ruled peacefully together over its three unique biomes, the Bind, Ever After, and Mythopia. Oh. But soon, a struggle for power between the Mistress of All Evil and the Lord of the Underworld uh, tore the veil apart. As you can imagine, when you get those two egos together in a room, sparks literally fly. Yes. And when the players arrive in the Vale, they'll find out that things haven't so happily ever after. Ink is spelling out of the very ground throughout the Vale, and other mysteries oh, have okay. begun to take hold. You'll meet with the Lord Keeper, a talking enchanted book who holds this world together. And while she won't tell many stories in her pages, the discord between Hades and Maleficent has scattered them. So only you can put them back together as you explore the Vale and get a little help from new friends along the way. Speaking of new friends, we were all treated to a glimpse of some of the villagers who will hopefully join us on our adventures and later our valleys. I'm sure I'm not the only one curious as to what you can tell us about our new friends. Well, I'm happy to share that part one of the storybook veil vale will bring with it three villagers for you to unlock. In the bind, you'll find Merida from Disney and Pixar's Brave. Oh, yeah. Merida is such a fun character, and she seemed like the perfect new friend for the player. This fearless princess will act as your guide, helping you command your own fate and learn more about this new world. And in Ever After, you'll meet with Flynn Rider from Disney Tango. This swashbuckling rogue will help you uncover a world of fairy tales. Flynn's personality is so exciting to play with. Just watch out when he boats on his smolder. <laughs> For players who already befriended Rapunzel in Disney Dreamlight Valley, A Rift in Time, look out for a special opportunity to reunite the two. And in Mythopia, you'll meet Hades from Disney's Hercules. Hades will help you to get to the bottom of a world of myths. And in my opinion, Hades is one of the funniest characters ever in a Disney movie, and he brings that same sense of humor to the game. So just watch out as he tries to make you his minion, because he's not exactly the greatest boss. <laughs> And of course, all these villagers will come with their own unique houses that you can move to the base game or to a oh, frozen island. Bien, cette maison. That's where you think they work best and want them to live. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to add Hades to my floating island oh, for villains. I'll absolutely be making a tangled theme floating island to house both Flynn and Rapunzel. But I noticed you didn't mention anything about Maleficent. While players might run into her in part one, stay tuned for part two to solve all the mysteries of the Vale and welcome her to the valley. And that's not all. You can expect one more mysterious figure to join forces with players in part two of the storybook veil. Vale. Aside from new friends helping us, is there anything else we can expect to aid us in piecing back together the Lorekeeper's stories? Yes, players will have their neural net to aid them. Why a net? Well, the scattered pages from the Lorekeeper hasn't just scattered with the wind. They've come to life in the form of snippets, which are enchanted oh, creatures that you have to capture. The snippets mostly hang out around the veil, but watch out for a few special rare ones that will show up back in their Dreamlight Valley. Can't believe how cute they are. They're going to be tricky to catch. Other than looking adorable flying around the veil, they will make the shiny, imagine. With their own unique way to be captured, that the player will need to figure it out. And once you catch them, you can restore Disney and Pixar magic to the Lorekeeper's pages with a puzzle mini game. 
Each tale takes the form of a beautiful oh, tapestry okay. telling a story behind a classic Disney or Pixar film. And these tapestries can then serve as beautiful pieces of decor that players can use to furnish their in-game homes. I can't wait to see the gallery spaces our players are gonna design to showcase them. But speaking of designing, as I'm sure players are invested in where to place their home in-game, what can we look forward to when exploring the different biomes in the expansion? Well, after seeing the feedback from our last expansion, We've improved the flow of unlocking the areas within the biome and how a player progression in turn affect the expression of this fantastical new world. One of our main goals in crafting the veil was to allow for easier and more inspired decorating for our decor driving players. Oh. We've also added more magic with the introduction of prominent landmarks oh, oh, and, Disney and Pixar stories. But of course, our team delights in creating secrets for players to discover too. Throughout your journey to the Vale, you will uncover trials, special oh, quests wow. inspired by fairy tales and myths. They've become scrabble-like pages in a book, and only the player can set them right using their full breadth of real tools, old and new. And I'm sure our community is up for the challenge. With all you've shared, it sounds like there's still many mysteries waiting for us in the Vale. Thank you so much for joining us, you two. Thank you. Thank you. Up oh, next, we invite two members of the art team to the stage to share more on the world and artistic design of the Storybook Vale. But first, oh. use the code on screen to claim a Dreamlight Bow headband in Oh, il a tous les codes. Pour l'instant, c'est incroyable. Et j'adore ce qu'il propose. Oh, wow. I'm joined by art director Steven and concept artist Yanon to dig into some of the inspiration behind the storybook veil. Hey there. Thanks for having us. Why don't we start with quite literally the biggest artistic endeavor of the expansion pass, the biomes. Earlier, we were introduced to the biomes, Utopia, and Ever After. Where did the inspiration for these biomes come from? In many ways, the biome was born out of our team's collective love of stories. There's something special and uniquely cozy about curling up with a good book. So the decision to lean into dark academia and the cool yet cozy ambience of an autumnal forest just made sense. And similarly, Mythopia, as you may have guessed from the name, is inspired by Greco-Roman culture and ancient myths. When you explore this biome, you'll walk wow. through fields of golden wheat, dotted with cypress too. trees, magenta florals, and wow. ancient ruins. And you may also discover subtle clues that a certain god of the underworld has also been there. Finally, there's Ever After. We drew a ton of inspiration from Scottish and Scandinavian folklore while sprinkling in fey mythology. The idea was to capture the feeling of a dark enchanted mushroom forest and windswept moorlands. I don't know about you, but for me, one of the most exciting aspects of digging into new biomes is seeing just how they'll translate into clothing and furniture items. Could you share a sneak peek at what folks can expect? Of course, self-expression is one of the main pillars of our game, so we love the idea of taking inspiration from the new biomes into player customization. Maybe you want to build a cozy library where you can read for hours, or you want to dress up as a Greek god or goddess, or design a magical mushroom fairy forest. I think that there's something for everyone here. Speaking of expression, we wanted to take our commitment to aesthetic cohesion even further in the storybook veil. Not only will you find Scrooge McDuck's store and Sherry Meme within this new world, but you'll also find oh. their facades have been overhauled to better fit in with their biome surroundings. Trop bien. We also want to keep an eye out for some new additions to Scrooge McDuck's store that will be available to owners of this new expansion pass. Oh. Knowing just how much care you've put into the smaller details of the environment, I'd love to know if there's any landmarks that stood out to you. Yes, well, speaking of those smaller details, we loved playing with scale in Ever After. In particular, there's a waterfall feature that's inspired by the Mad oh, Hatter's Tea Party from Disney's Alice in Wonderland. I feel like this perfectly captures the whimsy of that biome. The giant Hades statues in Mythopia is another imposing sighting game. Between that and the design of Mount Olympus, which features flames that mirror Hades himself, oh, like these true. players will have a blast picking out the details we worked in. What about snippets? Where did that idea come from? The snippets are literal pieces of escaped stories torn from a book. When we were imagining how they may have escaped, we realized oh, we snippets to have their own personalities. So the idea of origami animals or little paper creatures like a cute and fluttery bird or a silly little frog was created. I love that. Speaking of cute little animals, are you able to share anything about the new animal companions coming this expansion? Absolutely. As there will be three biomes arriving in the expansion pass, we'll be adding a unique critter to each, all with their own color variants and puzzling catching mechanics. Oh, Both of these soon to be animal companions for the players to find. Okay, so that's really the companions. And as a nod to Maleficent's rule of the land, players can find mini dragons in Ever After. Oh, and if that's not exciting enough, bien, uh... players can also find mini winged horses in Mythopia. Oh, the mini pigas. From Disney's Fantasia. That's incredible. I know I'll be counting the days until I can adventure with a mini dragon at my side. 
To wrap things up, however, uh, any last details on new collectibles and resources? As you've seen, the Storybook Veil's biomes are remarkable in their own ways, and the resources you can find in each are unique as well. One of my favorite new additions are koi. They can be found in the bind along oh. with sea wolf fish and delicious sea grapes. How about you, Stephen? Any favorites? I'm a big fan of the landscaping. Mephopia brings poppies, buried lightning strikes, and Borg Villia. And ever after is filled with and moss and giant flora. There's also a plenty of edible plants as well, range from green beans to porcini to more fantastical ones like ambrosia. Well, I can't wait to see how our players react to them. With new resources, can we also expect to be cooking up new delectable dishes? Uh, definitely. We have dozens of new recipes arriving. Oh, whoa. Oh, they bring dicks. Realizing ingredients from both the valley and the veil. Once again, thank you both so much for joining us today to dig into all the amazing art in Disney Dreamlight Valley, the Storybook Veil. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Now, let's take a look at how you can get your hands on the Expansion Pass. For those of you who've been following along on this magical journey and already own the base game, there are two ways to dive into the Storybook Veil Expansion Pass. Okay. For Rift in Time before it, the Expansion Pass will include a bundle of Moonstones with your purchase. If you'd like mm. to add a little extra magic, Look no further than the Magical Edition, which oh, offers quoi? even more Moonstones, oh, a collection of library and chic cosmetic items, and a truly adorable baby Pegasus animal companion. If you're new or know a friend who would love to get into Disney Dreamlight Valley, these are great starting points. Between the Disney Dreamlight Valley base game, the Storybook Veil Bundle, and the Enchanted Edition, you'll be able to choose what's right for you. And of course, we can't forget about those of you who take the time to dive into updates as soon as they arrive. We're excited to offer a special early adopter bonus for Expansion Pass owners. As we had new ways to begin oh. or expand upon your Disney Dreamlight Valley experience, we'll soon say goodbye to the Gold Edition, which comes bundled with the base game, our first Expansion Pass, A Rift in Time, and an assortment of cosmetic items. This edition will officially leave stores on November 20th at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. We are kicking off our deepest sale of the Gold Edition to date, so catch up on our first expansion, also on sale, while you wait for the Storybook Veil. Oh, from, the promo. from a new expansion pass exploring myth and the stories that connect us to floating islands that will open up all sorts of creativity in the valley we're so glad you were able to join us for all the excitement of today's showcase remember to redeem the two codes we shared throughout this showcase and the third and final one right here for unique dreamlight themed items in game and stay tuned to our social channels over the coming weeks for even more details of exciting new releases. No. Disney Dreamlight Valley, the Storybook Veil Expansion Pass launches on November 20th. Oh, November. And the November. So delightful <laughs> update arrives on December 4th. See, See you, you in the, the valley. valley. Oh là là, mais euh, fin du mois là. Il y a tellement de trucs à faire, on va tout le temps enchaîner, ça va être trop bien. Oh, c'est masterclass. Vraiment, c'est masterclass ce qu'il nous propose. Wow. Il n'y a pas eu le chat. Oh là là, mais tout ce qui arrive, les persos sont cool. Ah ouais. Donc j'aimerais bien revoir la roadmap. Non. We'll join him, bringing her signature patchwork style. Roadmap, roadmap. So delightful update. Là. Yeah. Ok. OMG. Donc là c'est début 2025. Il y aura Jasmine et Aladdin qui vont arriver dans un nouveau, euh, nouveau monde donc certainement que ce sera un, un royaume oh, trop bien au printemps donc c'est le chat de Cheshire mais plusieurs donc je pense qu'il y aura Alice en même temps bien sûr et après enfin le rocher du crâne mais euh, qu'est-ce que ça peut être Moi je pense que ça va être en rapport avec Peter Pan et peut-être ou le Capitaine Crochet, je pense que ça sera forcément l'un des deux. Hein. Quasi sûr en vrai. C'est quasi sûr. Mais je pensais que ça arriverait plus tôt quand même. Putain, il faudra attendre été 2025. C'est loin. C'est loin, loin, loin. Mais bon. Masterclass. Et le DFC a l'air tellement incroyable. Oh là là, ça va être trop bien. Ça va être trop bien. Oh mais regardez-moi ces statues et tout. Ah ouais. Ça rigole zéro. Ça rigole zéro. Donc évidemment, on sera là le jour J pour découvrir. Mais même ça, j'ai pas où c'est, ça a l'air trop bien. 
They've become scrabble like oh. pages in a book, and only the player can set them right using oh. the old and new. Donc 20 novembre c'est dans quoi 4 semaines pour le DLC On oh, fait voir. C'est le 20 hein. Ah c'est dans 3 semaines Arrête. C'est bon ça c'est le 20 Disney Dreamlight Valley, the Storybook Vale expansion pass. Ah mais ouais mais bon, ça arrive si vite. Du coup, après c'est le 4. Ok donc c'est séparé en deux semaines. Du coup le 20 et le 27 on focus euh, l'expansion pass. En vrai c'est en vrai je préfère qu'il fasse ça que de voir tout enchaîner en un truc. Et le 4, on enchaîne avec la mise à jour gratuite des îles. Tiens du coup les îles ça arrive pas maintenant mais euh, ok. Oh, tout ce que ça va rajouter Oh là là Oh là là C'est incroyable Incroyable ouais, 4 décembre Et ouais du coup... Euh... Sally a l'air d'être seule à arriver ce décembre. Mais ok. Ok ok ok. Ouah wow, c'est trop bien. C'est juste trop bien. Bon. On va couper le stream, hein. faut que j'aille manger et tout, et puis on se retrouve ce soir, du coup on va... On, on va essayer de se dépêcher, même si en vrai... Si on, si on commence un peu plus tard, si on commence pas à 20h, c'est pas grave, et au pire on terminera un peu plus tard de toute façon, demain. Demain c'est mercredi, demain on est tranquille. Voilà, oh là là, c'est trop bien, trop trop bien. Ça va arriver vite, et j'ai découvert. Attendez, est-ce que... Attendez, je me mets là, hop, en attendant. Est-ce qu'on peut déjà acheter le pass d'extension Ou il sera à dispo un peu plus tard euh, ta ta ta, Disney Dream Valley, faites voir un petit peu. Pour l'instant, pour l'instant, il n'y a rien. Ah, ouais, pour l'instant, il n'y a pas. Du coup, je pense que on pourra peut-être à partir de demain. Mais c'est pas maintenant quoi. C'est pas maintenant, c'est pas maintenant. Mais ça va être trop bien. Duc. Ok. Ok, ok, bah hâte de découvrir tout ça. Dans, dans trois semaines. Ça, ça va arriver vite, hein. Oh, vache. Ça va arriver vite. Du coup, je pense que quand on découvrira ça, ça sera le mercredi. Et je mettrai le... Et ça torni, on passera au lieu de... Enfin on va commencer, ça sera le lundi et le mercredi. Et dès qu'à mage, enfin le DLC sortira, ça sera le mardi et le jeudi. Que je vais terminer ça avant la fin d'année. Et euh... Et on verra si on... Ah en vrai il faudra peut-être faire plusieurs sessions parce que débloquer tous les biomes et tout ça va être long. Ah je verrai. On verra, on verra, on verra. De toute façon on a le temps. Bref, trop bien Trop hâte. On va se laisser là. On se retrouve à 20h pour du Fasmo. Moi je vais aller manger et tout. Et, euh, et puis voilà. Et bah euh, j'espère que cette petite réaction vous aura plu. Je vous dis à tout à l'heure. Des bisous. Bon appétit. Et puis euh, à tout à l'heure. Ciao ciao.